Well, we we are doing uh, a little bit of an interesting thing today here on the Music Cap Show. We we originally had a guest, and they didn't show up. And Mark was supposed to be on here in a few, but we moved him up. And uh, we have got your your uh, your incredible. Uh, I, I guess I would call them the talk show tag team champions of the world. Willie and Naya are with us today, and uh, they are going to be interviewing Mark Johnson, who is the author of a book that chronicles Mark's 60-year spiritual odyssey and acts as a uh, guide to those seeking a path to enlightenment. And it is called Life is Play, Live Compassionately, Intuitively, and Spontaneously, and Miracles Will Indeed Happen. And uh, Mark... You you are amazing. Uh, tell Naya and, and Willie here a little bit about your book and how you came to write this. Yes, please do. Okay. Um, this is the only book I didn't write. Um, the <laughs> other books I wrote because I was thinking and conscious and all that stuff. But uh, I finally evolved to where I did what I was telling everybody else to do, which is if you want to meditate, don't worry about going for a goal. Just stay empty and allow the ocean to go through you. Everybody thinks they're a wave. They're a wave in the ocean, but they're not. They're the entirety of the ocean because you can't separate the wave from the ocean. So, it's, And how many people know they are the entirety of the ocean instead of just being a wave? Not enough is the way I look at it. Maybe a handful. <laughs> anyway. What happened to me was, is that uh, I realized I, I was that way, and um, so I didn't have to write this. And all I did was sit down, and what I tell everybody else to do, sit down and be empty and allow the, 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 the divine oneness to come through you. And I did it. And that was a, quite an experience for me because... I'd sit there, and all of a sudden, I'd start typing. And then I'd look down, and I'd say, wow, what a great sentence that is. And, and after 200 pages of that, everybody wanted to read it, and they did, and they carried on about it. I can't take credit for writing that book. It's my, my um, great oneness of the inside that's one with everything, as, as everybody is, too. I wish to heck uh, my opening sentence is, why have you all not discovered your own innate divinity? That's how the book starts <laughs> off. Like, get them in there and punch them in the face right off the bat. That's my motto. Okay. So anyway, that's the story. I really didn't write this, and I didn't, because it was just what was being inspired and going through me. Boy, when I got it done and 200 pages worth, wow. So, okay, that's that's the answer to how that happened is that it, it happened uh, – from the you're hearing from the ocean and not just the wave on in that book excellent mark so you're telling me that this book pretty much highlights uh come on like kind of like, like an instruction of how to actually meditate or how to become one with yourself and open yeah. yourself to enlightenment is that and, sound about right yeah that's it exactly Everybody's, uh, you know, everybody feels like they're a wave on the ocean and they're trying to get wetter than all the other little waves. I got more money than you, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, right. fine. Uh, that, that's a hell of a way to go through life is all I got to say. And then I'm saying, I, I hate to break it through you, but you're not just that crappy little wave. You are the entirety of the ocean. So get used to that. You know, and then people say, oh, I'm going to try that. You know, okay, fine. Well, I tried it, and I got it, and I want everybody to get it because you already got it. You don't have to do anything. You just sit there and be empty, and, and synchronicities will start. Uh, this is something he didn't point out. Synchronicities is very big in my book. Can you see the book Life as Play? Yes. yes. That's yes. where we all get it. You know, don't even wait till the, <laughs> this is over. Do it right this minute. <laughs> get it. And there's 200 pages, full color, with uh, the writings of the ocean uh, from through a wave. But anyway, I'm trying to convince everybody they're not just waves, and you're not here to get wetter than all the others. And when a big wave comes in like that, you get scared, and then you run around like everybody in the United States right now going, <laughs> Did you see what they did? <laughs> you know, 
good God, uh, you're the you're the totality of everything. Don't get so excited over a crappy little planet here. I plan on going to Andromeda and not coming back. That's that's where my life is. <laughs> Okay. Any other questions? Did, did that answer your question? Yes. So, so, we're, we're divine and get used to it is basically the message. Right. So yeah. tell us, when you decided to write this book, what experience did you go through that made you say, you know what, I need to put this in a form for everyone to read it? What did you actually have a, like a, a, a life experience that that motivated you to write this book? Yes, but it wasn't just a an experience. There's been hundreds of them, and they're all <laughs> critical in here, and I call them synchronicities. And you know what synchronicity is? It's, the, uh, it's like when you pluck a guitar string over here, and it's a certain size, it'll, it'll vibrate because you plucked it. But 10 feet away, if you have nine, uh, nine uh, com uh, of the same machines there, it'll start vibrating. It can't be helped. That's the way nature is, is that light, all life is energy and it's at different frequencies, like a uh, rainbow. And even though they're different, different energies and frequencies, they all come together in a rainbow in a happy way. So you have to learn how to put the rainbow together with, uh, you can do that, your chakras, you know. And uh, so that's, that's the message of the book that it is when you, when you live compassionately, intuitively, spontaneously, the synchronicities will happen. And the first one was when I was working in New York City, I woke up in the morning at, t at six in the morning, shaving, about ready to go to work. And I'm thinking, hey, I don't like my job. I don't like New York. I don't like New Yorkers <laughs> either. <laughs> so I'm going to go out to Hawaii, uh, where I've always wanted to be, and uh, eat fruit off the tree and uh, have sex with all the natives. And that's it. So I hung up, called the office, and said, I'm out of here. So I went down to the uh, where the uh, boats are to get to go to the eat. And they said, well, sorry, silly. You know, we don't go there, but you got to go to the West Coast. So, okay. Ten minutes later, I hired a... Uh, taxi to take me out on the big uh, rare, uh, the road that goes down from New York clear to Florida because I had a friend there and I could make a little few little money and then I'll go across to uh, western USA. So I, uh, I, I paid this, uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call those little cars that take you around and, and they dropped me off and there I have my little suitcase and about 40 bucks to my name and I stick my thumb on it and this little old car drives up and it's an old man and woman. And I was born and raised in central Pennsylvania. And I, you know, I'm still very much right up against the ocean right now with my thumb out. So they pull up and we get talking and they say, where, I say, where are you from? And they said, oh, Phillipsburg, Pennsylvania. And that's where I grew up. Whoa, what a coincidence, we both said. After about 10 minutes, they said, whoa, I, I, it was your father that I worked for. He's the greatest man I ever met. We'll take you down there for nothing, and you can have your own motel room, and we'll pay for it, and blah, blah, blah. See what I mean? That's what happens when you really surrender to the divine and to see what it can do for you. It's like, oh, thank you, divine. That's not bad. That would. So I went to Florida, and they paid the way, and they stopped at the... That uh, psychic center, what's that psychic center? Because I'm very interested in psychic stuff. And I uh, spent a weekend there. The little old couple just sat there in their motels while I was in there taking tests. And they tested me for my psychic abilities. And they said, you know, you're, you're, you're the way, what you ended up with was so bad that you have to be psychic to be that bad. <laughs> so I said, okay. And they said, but we like your, uh, your, your um, my attitude of being a, a challenger and ask questions and don't believe a damn thing till you experience it yourself. So, so they said, here's a list in Florida. Go look them all up while you're down there. So I did, 22 of them. And in the process, I ran into my first spiritual teacher who was a Advaita Vedantist. I stayed 10 years with them. Uh, and then I w went to, I started liking, you know, I was doing all the, the exercises and the, everything they did for 10 years. But then I decided I liked what the Taoists were doing better. And on the way there, I ran into a Zen Buddhist, what's his name, who died while I was there, ruined everything. 
uh, but I got one year with him. I can't think of his name right now. Oh, by the way, have do you explain to them how I, I can't remember names because I was in an airplane crash. I'm an aviator. And oh. we plowed through a warehouse, 100 miles an hour. I went through the window. My seat belt broke, and I flew out and smacked into the, the building again and bounced back about five feet with no, with no uh, uh, frontal lobe anymore. That's what the doctor said after I woke up three days later. And so they put in a, you know, a metal plate. So I can't remember names. And, and every once in a while, I can't remember a, a very common word. So get used to it. And if you know what I'm getting at, holler it out. Okay, so any, <laughs> any more questions? So, so I want to I ask you a question. Let's, let's get into your, you know, psychic, like, uh, you, what you call abilities. Um, I know you were saying that you met some people and they were trying to find out more about it as well. So when did you find out that you had this ability? L let us know a little bit more about that side. I had the potential of it all my life uh, because I did unusual things as a child. Um, but um, actually, the, the biggie, the big change was my moving down there and having that synchronicity. And then I saw what was possible. And then I just started looking around and everything. And, uh, and, and then after the, after the Buddhists, I was with them one year, but he died on me. And then I got into with the Taoists in, uh, in uh, California. And after three years, I decided I'm going to China and learn this stuff directly. So I studied Chinese and went over. And the, <laughs> and the day we arrived, me and the two other guys that already go there to, to get to their um, acupuncture teacher, they took me to him. And the, the guy came out with a cigarette coming out of his mouth, and he was in his underwear, and he's working on everybody. I thought, oh, God, there's surely there's got to be a better one around here. So I went off to a place to get a, a, a some place to live, and I said, I'm looking for a, a Tai Chi person or something, a Qigong. They said, oh, there's one just a block away. So I walked over, and bam, there he was. My two friends came with me. They dropped their teacher immediately. We spent about a year there with him learning him and his students incredible stuff yeah unbelievable but it's in the book so um i saw one miracle after another and, and that man had a uh, photographic memory and he knows everything about you and it's embarrassing especially my life <laughs> uh he knew everything about everybody and he was very modest and he just sat quietly and uh, his students would fall out onto the floor and come up and talk from somebody from Andromeda or somewhere. It was weird, uh, but I got used to it. And so that's how, that's where I was for one year there with them. But I talked them coming back to the United States. We lived in Malibu on a mountaintop overlooking it. everything about Malibu and, you know, movie stars on each side of us. So he took over and he taught there for 22 years. And I helped write his books in that time. And finally, he kicked me out. Uh, didn't give me any reason, but that's how the Taoists uh, graduate you. <laughs> they don't say. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and when you want to join them, they they refuse you three times. Did you know that cute little thing? Get ready for it, because I put up with it, and otherwise I wouldn't be where I am knowing him. He kicked me out three times when he got to Malibu. He said, oh, look at you, you know, flirting with her when you're supposed to be doing it. You're out of here. So he kicked me out, and I, and then they let me back in in about a month. And then a couple of uh, months later, he kicked me out again for another reason and back in. So they, they refuse you three times. But the biggie is when they graduate you. I, I was sent to Florida to teach, the, teach, to teach his students from all around the world. So that was about 25, 30 people. And we were just starting, and we were in a basketball court uh, about to start, and uh, the phone rang underneath the balcony. Uh, what do you call those where the chairs, it's not called the balcony. What do you call that? Where the... Bleachers. Oh, what? Bleachers. Bleachers, yes. Okay, I, actually, you could say, may, turn it louder. I, I can't quite hear you because I have to do that every time to hear you. Okay, uh, the yeah, we said the the bleachers, yes. So the there was a phone behind the bleachers, and uh, and there was a lady there. She says, "I'll get it." So she says, um, uh, "Hello, oh, okay, yes, yes, I'll tell them all." 
So she hung up, hung up with it. And there's 20, 20 of my friends from around the world that have been doing this. I wanted higher level stuff. Um, she said he he uh, is kicking Mark out, and he never wants to hear his name mentioned again. And that I'm never supposed to mention his name either. <laughs> okay, I just say my teacher. <laughs> okay, so that's what happened. And everybody started crying. And I says, no way, I better. I said, you don't know how these people work. <laughs> I said, that's graduation, because I'd been with him for 22 years, and he sent me all over the country, New York, and places that started Tai Chi things. I didn't do anything more crazy than what I usually do. So I knew that was his way of saying, now you're on your own. Let's see what you can do on your own without my constant influence. See what I mean? Right. So he that's kicked me out, and I haven't seen him since. He's still alive. He's about 92 years old, and I'm about 80. <laughs> so uh, we're getting along there. Any, yes. any other questions? It's amazing. Is there, like, any particular chapter in the book that stick out more than others? Oh, they all stick out. That's the problem. They're all incredible. <laughs> and that's, well, what the peop that's what the people said who read it. They, and it's funny, too, because, you know, I, life is play. It's, play. it's a playful book, and mm -hmm. uh, but it's profound. And whenever and I get somebody laughing, then I hit them with a profound sentence, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> you know, and then, and then I laugh and carry on and do stuff. And then the next thing you know, there's a big black line that says this and this and this. And, whoa. And that's how everybody seems to respond to it. And uh, it's catching on. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah. Yes. So who, uh, who and, and, if, and it becomes a big seller around the world. Uh, by the way, I won't rest until it's in every motel room in the country. Keep that in mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, and when it does, I'm going to disappear into a cave somewhere by myself. Because my teacher lived in a cave for many years, and he, they didn't eat. They, it's called bigu in Chinese. They, did, they don't eat. And they just drink water, and they don't eat, and they stay there, and this thing is incredible. Uh, probably is what I'm going to do, too. Uh, so once. Tell everyone where we can find your book now. Like, where oh. can we find that? It's easy to find. It's in, uh, well, you know, don't you? Uh, Jiggy Jagger, you know uh, the name of it. It starts with an M. Uh, starts with an M? Uh, yeah, all right. Let me, I have it here. Amazon. Amazon, know. there it is. Yeah. Uh, well, that's close enough. You know, A and M, that's a damn good. <laughs> anyway, Amazon. You go to Amazon and type in Life is Play, and it'll come out big, and then you'll see big red stars all over the place, and people saying, this is the greatest damn book I ever saw in my life, and blah, blah, blah. You can't miss it. And by the way, it's in four different forms. It, we did a voiceover by an expert voice guy who pronounced all the Hindu names wrong, all the uh, Taoist names wrong, all the, oh my God, that was funny. Took us weeks and weeks to where he could pronounce, you know, Sachi and that kind of stuff. And this guy, and I met all the great teachers in the world uh, from all of my travels and wow. got to know them all. And, um, uh, do you website or maybe like a email. yeah i have that too and, and i got my little piece of paper here too so you got nothing to worry about it's called dow publishing company d-a-o-p-u-b-l-i-s-h-i-n-g.com that will go to this you're going to see that right off the bat then you're going to see pictures of me in china because i i took students to china twice a year for 20 years so a lot of Chinese trips are in there and a lot of the beauty and the gorgeousness, but a lot of the teachers that I knew were there, which was damn near the greatest Hindu on the planet at the time and the, the most known Buddhist at the time, the one, the guy that died on me. And then I was with the Taoists and uh, probably the greatest Taoists on, on the planet. So I got to meet them all and then they all kicked me out. <laughs> so here I am. And I'm not even here anymore. It's just the inside doing its thing. So is there anything more you'd like to hear from my insides? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark. Well, we truly appreciate you being here on Music Cap and actually bringing to this book to the forefront so that way people can get enlightened and open them up, open themselves up to the ways. And like, hopefully, you know, it could actually you know, be contagious and everybody else become, you know, waves and wave formats in this world, <laughs> make this world better. Good. Can you do us a favor? Tell us your name and that 